Thank you so much for joining us. You're watching a special edition of The Quest. I'm your host, Gravazio Zulu. And today we're looking at national food security and in particular availability of the staple food and skyrocketing prices of Millimule. With various measures put in place by the government to counter rising food prices, there still seems to be little hope in sight. Established retail shops are now restricting the quantity of Millimule one can buy, raising fears that the worst is yet to come. Today we are on a quest to find a solution to concerns and fears around national food security. And in the studio, I have a very strong panel that controls the staple food uh, processing channel. Uh, I have the Minister of Agriculture, uh, Mr. Given Lubinda. Minister, welcome to the program. Thank you. And good evening and good evening viewers. I also have Dr. Evelyn Nguleka, who is the President for the Zambia National Farmers Union. Doc, welcome <coughs> to the program. Thank you. Good uh, evening viewers. Next to her is uh, Mr. Chambeleni Simwinga, the Grain Traders Association of Zambia Secretary. Sir, you're welcome to the interview. Thank you. Good evening, viewers. We also have the Miller's <coughs> Association of Zambia Interim Chairperson, Mr. Andrew Chintala. Sir, you're welcome. Good evening and uh, good evening, viewers. And last but not the least, uh, on my far left, I have uh, Mr. Chola Kafobula, who is the <coughs> Executive Director for the Food Reserve Agency. Mr. Kafobula. Nice to have you on the program. Thank you very much and good evening. Well, this program is live and you can phone in and contribute uh, on the line 25-1901 or you can SMS uh, TV1, leave a space, uh, write your message and send to 4882. Now, I will start with one important question. General, but probably Minister, you can pick it. Does the country have enough maize? <laughs> Thank you for asking that question. And uh, it makes me laugh because that's what the one question that I've answered the most times. I think this is probably the number 1,010 time that I'm answering this question from different people. And the answer that I've been given, uh, giving has always been consistent. And no matter how many times I'm asked that question, this year I'll give the same answer. And the answer is yes, we have enough food to feed all Zambians. We have enough food to feed Zambians through the commercial market chain. We also have food to feed the vulnerable through the disaster management and mitigation unit. And we also have food to give to communities that don't have milling plants close by for what we're referring to as community sales. The answer is emphatically, yes, we are food secure. We have enough food. And this food that we have, the carryover stocks from the 2014-2015 season are enough to take us into August of 2016. That is without regard to the harvest of 2016. Probably, Minister, if you came into the studio, uh, maybe next week or two weeks from now, I'll still ask you that same question. Maybe you're not convincing. The situation on the ground speaks contrary to what you say. And uh, that is the reason why I'm very happy that uh, this evening you have brought such a pow high-powered delegation because indeed, like you said, these are the ones who control the maize chain. You have the producer, represented by Dr. Nguleka. You have the traders, you have the millers, and you have also got the stock storeman, the storekeeper. He's the one who keeps the key for the food reserve. So you have all the people who have the answers. Maybe when I've, giving, I've been giving these answers on my own without such people, some may have been doubting me. But now I have the experts, and they it's were probably maybe me. people think the, the modus operandi now of government is to deny uh, the reality. And how does that really help you? This this government never denies the truth. We always tell the truth. We don't uh, go around saying one thing and meaning the other. And as for the Ministry of Agriculture, there is no way that we can possibly tell people half truths with regard to food, because if we say that there is enough food when there isn't enough, what will happen? It will run out. And what will happen is probably what we are seeing now. I, I know I'll get back to you, Minister, yes. but maybe I want ZNFU to give us... You, 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 you probably are independent from government. You, you need to tell us, is there enough food in the country? There's so much panic, really. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Gouvazio. Um, I would like to concur with the Minister this evening. And, uh, of course, apart from being a farmer, a producer, I am a consumer. And uh, I would like to assure the nation 
that as farmers we've done our utmost best. This country is food secure. We have produced enough not only to feed the Zambians, but we also <coughs> produced enough actually to even give to our neighbors. And I think that is one of the things uh, that uh, people have been <coughs> complaining about. Why did we even allow some of the food to go out? We do calculations as farmers. We have extended what we are producing. And as farmers, we want to produce more, and we have been producing more. The truth of the matter is, yes, the climate, starting from last year, was very difficult, but we did produce more than we needed. We produced over 2 million metric tons of maize, and there's no way we would have consumed all of that. And we needed to leave the borders open so that we can be able to export and be able to have only what we needed. Did we overexport? That's the question. No, we did not. Mm. As we sit today, we have close to 800,000 metric tons of maize in stock in our country, in safe custody. Not only with FRA, but also some are with ZNFU farmers, some are with the millers themselves, and some are with the traders. So there is absolutely no need for anybody to panic. But Gravazio, we should also, as human beings, be aware that this is a trade, it can also be a trade catch. Mm. If I tell you that there's no water tomorrow, you're going to fill up all your bathtubs and it, it, nobody will bath in the house because you think there'll be no water tomorrow. And I think this is what is happening. People have been told there's not going to be food in the next month. And therefore, people are buying four bags instead of buying one bag. Why should you? Those bags of million people are buying now will start rotting in their houses. And that will be a wastage. Let's continue buying the normal way we've been uh, buying because this country has enough. <coughs> As said in a few, you're, you're a businessman. You're, you're, you're into agriculture for business, not really for, for, for charity. Is this where you wanted the situation to be? You can make money now, I know. As a farmer. Yes, yes. And, and probably and, and you're enjoying this situation. Well, I, and unfortunately, I wish we could be part of the whole value chain. Unfortunately, our chain ends when we produce and we sell it. So when we are selling the millimill, actually the, the bundle is no longer in our hands. The control is no longer in the hands of the farmer because the farmer has already sold the maize. But for us, our argument is do not close the borders. Because what happens next year? You still want us to export? Yes. Even when we have such a very uncertain situation? Well, what uncertainty? <laughs> this is March. And it, it, maybe the question you, you should be asking really, is... It's, it's, not, it's, it's, un, it's not uncertain when I cannot walk into a shop and buy two bags of milk? And that is milk. where my argument comes in. It is not the fault of the farmer. It is not the fault of the storekeeper who has the commodity. It is, it is the fault market. of the miller. It is the market strategy. There is absolutely no reason why any shop should not have maize, should not have millimil. There is Adequate absolutely stops. no reason why anybody... I mean, I've been to places. I've just finished a tour <coughs> of uh, northern Wapula. I, w I went into a shop in Sonwezi, and I was wondering what was going on. Honorable Minister, I was amazed. I found a very long queue, and I thought, what are they fighting for? I was told they were fighting for millimil. And we still say the situation is Satan. Well, Doc, I'll come back to you. Traders, you've been accused of holding the maize. Your maize, the, the, the grain that you're keeping is just for exports. At least that's what I heard from the millers mm. or read from the papers. No, probably not true. Miss uh, Yeah, the, the reason is that uh, we have sufficient. We, we sit with uh, the Ministry of Agriculture, <coughs> all the stakeholders in the, in the food chain, okay? ZNFU, FRA, the millers. What we have, as uh, Dr. Ngoleka said, there's sufficient stocks. There's even enough to even export. Okay? And <clears throat> in principle, uh, Honorable Luwinda has done a lot that has excited private sector participation in terms of uh, marketing. What we're worrying now is that uh, there's a lot of excitement with the people in terms of minimum shortage. But what they're forgetting is that that kills the process of open border policy. Okay? There would be hesitance in exporting because, like yesterday I got a call, 
to say that there were two trucks at Central Police with legal papers for export into Zimbabwe. There's enough that we can export still, but we're not exporting now. We're slowing it down because we're trying to help government sustain the views that uh, people are having. But the reality is there's sufficient maize for export. We're sitting <coughs> on past 200,000 metric tons for export. But that tells you to say that if we don't sell that 200, plus 200,000 metric tons, where do we get the money to finance the next season in terms of marketing? And when will the, the warehouses, warehouses be empty? You see, government alone through FRA cannot buy all the stock. We export, we, we're expecting probably about 2.2 to 2.4 harvest this year. <coughs> the heavens, are, God has listened to us. There's enough rains, okay? We might harvest past 2.2, 2.4 million tons of maize. Where Which can still be called a bumper harvest by standard. Yeah, by it should be. Yeah, it should be a bumper harvest. Yeah, because our consumption rate is lower by far than that. So we are surprised as as traders to why people are excited about saying <coughs> there's no enough maize, there's excess maize. Now, what will happen is if that we do not export the maize, then the government definitely or FRA through FRA they don't buy enough stock. If I cannot buy the 2.2 or 2.4 million tons of maize, you need the trader who's financed by the banks. Okay? So we're holding on to about 200,000 tons which has not been exported because we're trying to deal with the situation based on speculation and rumors. So we're here to say that what the minister has been saying is very true. There's sufficient maize stock to take us, even past August. I don't even know why we say August. It, we can go past mm -hmm. August. Yeah. So it's uh, a strange uh, behavior. One, one thing you need to realize is that uh, the Zambians are very uh, business-minded. If I was buying a bag of millimil and I see that there's a, a speculative uh, moment, I'll buy four bags of millimil. Pack it in small, slow, small bags. At the end of the day, I'm starving the other next buyer. The reality is... But if, if there's enough, why yeah. would the other buyer starve? The market would be flooded. It, it wouldn't be flooded. The reason is, if you're buying one bag, the, hundred, uh, the, the normal outlay of uh, maize grain is 100,000 tons on the market. This is year-on-year year calculation. These are normal patterns. Okay? But now, why is it that Zambia, we're going beyond the 100,000 tons consumption? For human consumption as that now. What is happening to the economy? Is the population beyond 14 million? And if you talk about 14 million, don't forget about the, 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 the rural farmers that stock their own maize for consumption. So you're talking about the people along the line of rail that consume the normal processed medium. So what is happening among us this thing? Okay, okay I, I, I'll skip the millers first. I, I, want, I want the people that hold the maize to speak. Uh, Mr. Kafavlula, you... If Everybody says there's enough maize. Well, if, uh, if you can't believe the minister, <laughs> at least you can believe this man. <laughs> because I'm the one who's holding the key <laughs> to where the maize is kept. <laughs> I see the maize every day. I feel it. I touch it. And I, s I know it is stored. FRA has signed several contracts with, uh, with millers. A total of uh, 101 uh, uh, contracts with millers for the supply of maize. And on average, we are releasing about 100,000 metric tons of maize. And at the moment, as FRA, we are holding approximately 560,000 metric tons. Now, this is much. Mm -hmm. From that figure, Simple arithmetic will show you that we've got enough stocks up to somewhere around August. The new crop will be in between May and June. So when we talk about the country have, having sufficient maize stocks, that is actually the reality. Mm -hmm. What you are seeing on the ground, as my colleagues alluded to, is basically speculation. There is absolutely no need to panic. If there was any need to panic, as FRA would have been the first to raise the flag, the flag. Mm -hmm. Because we are the ones who are looking at the, the stock levels. So there's actually no reason for anyone to, to panic. There's something bigger than panic, really. I, I don't think 
a lot of people are buying more than they always buy. It is just speculation. Uh, to Something begin, is just not right here. You see, to, to begin with, uh, we have been reading in the in the media about the El Nino. Uh, people have been talking about the fact that the rains have been quite poor, so our harvest might be poor. Probably that could be one of the reasons for the speculation. But if the answer is, do we have sufficient food for the country? Yes, we do have sufficient stocks. And for me, I'm looking at the figures that we have. Mm. For the millers, you, you probably are the only one saying there isn't enough maize in the country. And well, you, need, you need help from, from, from FRA to, 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 to feed the nation. Thank you, uh, Grabazo. Let me probably just try to clarify that further. Um, I think you've gotten the figures from uh, ZNFU, GTAZ, and FRA. So when you had the figures, it's giving you about uh, over 800 plus metric tons of um, maize that we have locally. Uh, the situation is this. I think uh, the consumption monthly consumption is in the region of 100,000 metric tons. Mm. So just simple arithmetic, that should tell you that we can go for the next eight months with sufficient stocks. So we've had uh, situations, and I just toured a few provinces uh, just to try and do the fact-finding uh, on a fact-finding mission to find out under certain what really is a challenge there. Um, Grebazo, I'm happy to tell you that um, I think what we've noticed, like my colleagues have said, is that there's just panic buying. And the other challenge with the millers is that uh, there's been some logistic, logistical problem with uh, the food reserve agents. We've engaged them already, and then we're, we're talking. And I'm sure in the next one, two weeks or so, you should be able to see the situation normalizes. But otherwise, there's we, we, just... We've had this before. Probably the minister has also assured before, the situation will normalize in one, two weeks. It, it, it has never normalized. No, we've for engaged... The, for the last few months, yeah, we've the situation engaged... has just gotten from worse to worst. Let me, let me say this, Gravazo. I think uh, we have a very listening minister who runs an open-door policy. Even at short notices, we've engaged the minister and said, Minister, look, we have a problem. Mm -hmm. What you have here, Gravazo, is that uh, most of the millers, um, Mr. Kafobula has said 101 millers that have signed the contract. Now, um, let me tell you this. All the millers that have signed the contracts with FRA, those contracts have been honored by FRA. And all we've asked for is the allocation that was given. We are saying it might not be sufficient. Can you give us more? And FRA have said, fine, can you come? We, we're sitting, we're negotiating, and we'll get allocations according to the consumption of each miller. So you're saying what is being given to you now is not enough. Probably that's also causing the, 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 the shortage we're seeing and the, the rise in prices of milling. Yeah, because, you see, the contracts that were obtained, other millers you'll be happy to know that they've gone even to, uh, they have entered even into some toll milling arrangements that is what has made the demand the 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 the, 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 the demand for some more <coughs> allocation of the maize so the consumption has doubled if a miller was milling eight tons they are now doing 12 tons so it's inevitable they can come back and knock again to fra can you give us some moments because we need to flood the market so like i'm saying we're negotiating with fra through the ministry and then once this is resolved, all the logistics and everything is put in place. Within the next one, two weeks, you should be able to see that the situation normalizes. Are you running a cartel? From trying to hold government at ransom? Trying to hold the public at ransom? You know this is a political crop. This is a staple food. And you, you just call out once and everyone has to react. No, it's, 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 it's never the wish of uh, Mars to, to run a cartel. There's no cartel that is running here, Gravazo. These are farmers here. They, they're sitting on their stocks. And one thing that I should tell you why we're saying, fine, can we engage FRA? We've signed the contract. So when you look at um, what the contract with FRA and with GTAZ and ZNFU, I think you see that um, FRA is a little bit cheaper than this. The agency is a food reserve agency that should store maize stra for strategic reserves. But they overbought, they actually bought more maize. This is why government needs to intervene. When there's a situation like this, the government releases maize so that we can cushion the impact. So that is why all the millers are saying, can we engage FRA again and get some more maize? We can go and knock on ZNFU, but let me stress this point. If we sign the contract and get this maize now from ZNFU and push it through the milling, mill, I mean the milling plants, the price will go up. It might be fetching 90 kwacha, I mean somewhere there. Yeah. So, so now, uh, uh, what people are saying is that you're the ultimate beneficiaries in the whole chain. 
you don't do anything you just sit no, no. buy a bit of maize and you know come august you just raise the price and you know if i will move in government will also move in and we don't we don't we, 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 we you've got we, no we, we don't dictate a big price and Rebazo, big listen. Ma profit margin you, <laughs> I you, said, you don't move you don't go to I, buy the maize I, I, I how said, come for oh, probably over eight seven years you've run short every almost every year this is an annual story exactly millers don't have maize fra has to afford is it is it is it a trick something no no it's it's not a trick Grabazo. we are not holding government at ransom here so even when you look at the price of so the the selling price of minimum now we engaged the government we engaged that and we sat on the round table and did the calculations we are actually producing millimil that the farmers have also produced we are dealing with a finished product so when you say we don't do anything we just benefit there is a process to for us to produce that millimil there is a process for us to produce the stock feed so when you say the millers are actually no 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 that uh, grabazo really i they're <laughs> I not bet. the ultimate beneficiaries no no the consumers are the ultimate beneficiaries minister you, you some of the information in the public domain is that we are in this mess to call it because you've interfered with the supply side but and the <clears> millers <throat> are now upset they're not producing to the, to the capacity that they should be they're now focusing on feed focusing on flour and deliberately neglecting the minimum as a matter of fact the interventions made by the government this year last year in the maize supply chain has added value to the whole industry added value for the farmer added value to, for the trader added value for the uh, miller and added value for the consumer why do i say this the millers are now aware of the fact that going forward the food reserve agency will not be their warehouse and this is also the reason why this year fra has entered into more contracts than ever before normally they would be supplying maize to a handful of millers this year they are supplying 101 millers across the whole country the reason government did that was after realizing that the m vast capacity in milling is along the line of rail. Mm. The rural areas don't have such capacity. But to encourage investment in the, the rural areas, FRA has been giving contracts also to small little mills that are operating in the periphery. And my message to the millers has been a clarion call for them that going forward, starting this year, they ought to procure their own maize. They should not expect the Food Reserve Agency to buy maize for onward delivery to them. This is also for the farmer. <clears throat> the farmer must be made aware of the fact that the FRA will not be the buyer of first resort. Mm. It shouldn't be. The Food Reserve Agency has a mandate bestowed by it by an act of parliament to buy strategic reserves. And given the fact that we are consuming a hundred thousand between a hundred thousand and hundred and fifty thousand a month the strategic reserve figure was calculated on the time it will take for zambia to import maize in the event that there is crop failure and from the furthest point where we can import maize it will take three months that's how we came up to the figure of five hundred thousand metric tons as national strategic reserve and this is what we should do we should maintain our 500,000 metric tons. Now, when people say we interfered on the market, we interfered by allowing people to export the excess maize. And we allowed the ex export of excess maize for various reasons. First, like everybody has told you, we had a carryover stock from 2014 of more than a million tons, which was costing the Food Reserve Agency more than $2 per ton per month. Storage. Can you imagine that? Two dollars per month, per ton. And we had more than one million. 3.5 dollars. Well, 3.5 million dollars. Down the drain, s simply by employing him to watch that maze and keep a key and check it in the morning and lock in the evening. <laughs> 3.5 million dollars. This economy can't afford that kind of money. We had to offload that maze on the international market to open up warehouses 
so that the crop of 2015 could go in. We also at the same time had to allow the farmer to make business. Farming is not charity, farming is business. And the cost of production must be met by the market. Now, you are aware of the fact that the last three, four years, Zambia has been very well blessed. That even if my friends were getting swollen knees, kneeling down and praying hard that there should be a drought in Zambia, they were praying every day and night, even praying through BBC, praying through newspapers. <laughs> You saw Haga Inde Ijirema parading himself like he, you know, a very unpatriotic person. He's probably not here. No, he's not here, but this was... He's no, not here to defend Mr. himself. No, he doesn't have to. He defended himself already, Mr. Zulu. <laughs> and every person out there knows Mr. Haga Inde was on BBC. He didn't hide the fact. He was very happy to tell the whole world that this country I belong to exported all the maize at $200 per ton. And now the country is starving. We are now importing maize at $500 per ton. Is that the correct picture? My foot. <laughs> he is the cause of this panic. He himself and UPND. Uh, uh, are, are, are you being realistic? I'm being by blaming one individual of sending the whole nation into a panic how many and times, causing the whole problem of the, uh, how in the, many in the maize times, marketing system? How many times has Haga Inde and his UPND MPs raised the issue of us having exported all the maize and now importing expensive maize. How many times have they done that? They have done that several times. And I wouldn't even doubt that there could be some traders, there could be some millers who are also susceptible to this panic. I couldn't doubt it. I could imagine that there could be some millers who are also worried when they hear Haga Inde speak on BBC. My country is importing maize at $500. But they have Meanwhile, the data. Why should they panic? Maybe? They could panic because they would... He said he had information. Hagainde himself said he had information. Would, would you blame which, anyone which, which, who would which, think? Which, Mr. Zulu, which some millers may not have. It's not every miller who would go to Mr. Kafobua and say, can you clarify this? Mm -hmm. But when a person comes and he speaks, I'm a leader of the uh, opposition in Zambia and I'm telling you the truth on BBC. My country has no food. My country is starving. My country exported maize. Now it's importing at $500. The uh, among I, I, the are you not agreeing with him when he says that and I walk into a shop and I'm only allowed to buy one bag? I'm not agreeing with him at all because he is the cause, he's partly the cause of this panic. He and his party are the ones who have caused this panic. You've confirmed at a higher level that you intend to import maize from Brazil. No, not mm -hmm. at all. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Not a single member of the Patriotic Front government ever stated that we are going to import maize. President Edgar Lungu while addressing a rally in Chipata, said in the event that there is crop failure in Zambia, the first alternative you would have is to engage commercial farmers to grow irrigated, irrigated maize. Mm. The second would be to ask the traders mm. not to export the maize they were holding on to the 227,000 metric tons. And the third and last option would be to import. He never said he was going to import maize. And again, Haga Inde and particularly Muntanga, request Muntanga. You are mentioning so many names who, yes, are, who are probably not sitting the, with you on this panel these, these and cannot defend themselves when and they cannot say the Mr. basis Zulu, from which they when, said that when, when Mr. Haga Inde spoke on BBC, the BBC interviewer did not say to him, can we bring the Minister of Agriculture to clarify what you are saying? They aired that. How come you are being so cagey about it? BBC aired it. They didn't say, sorry, you are mentioning government and there is no government well, Was it a debate? Minister? No, it wasn't a debate. He was just on an interview, like I'm on an interview. I'm not on a debate, and I even said I challenge Haga Inde to come on ZNBC or even on BBC. Let's go together with me on BBC so that he can go and prove to me whether he's buying livestock feed uh, from outside Zambia at $500 a metric ton. And I'm very upset because he is partly to blame for this. Very emotional about this. I am, you, you, you I am not, charged. I am charged about it because I... I'm aggrieved to see that Zambians are being put in this panic mood because of somebody trying to make polit cheap political mileage. I can't accept it. 
And I am the person who has been charged the responsibility of ensuring that there is enough food in Zambia. You said already, Mr. Zulu, that it is because of my interference on the market. That's what has created this. Why have you come to that conclusion? Because you heard somebody saying, I allowed the export of all the maize at $200, and now I'm importing maize at $500. That's the reason yeah, The asking. export is not an interference, Minister. The interference is the harassment of the millers, who probably are not, are not selling the price, the maize at the price they want to. And they're now into feed. Has anybody complained about feed? Had, Probably had, because it's not being tampered with. Had I not gone to millers to discuss with the millers, they would have gone to buy maize from the traders. Mm -hmm. The maize that the traders are holding on to is valued for the export market. And the export market now, the export parity price of maize, landed Harare $383 per metric ton. Landed along with $385 per metric ton. That is the maize that the traders are holding on to. Hadn't I allowed the Food Reserve Agency to release maize to the millers, the millers would have accessed that maize. What price would you have been paying today? Because now they are buying maize at less than $170 per metric ton. So actually, <coughs> what you're saying is that I intervened on the market to cushion the Zambian consumer while also protecting the farmer. I didn't want the farmer to sell their maize at 60 kwacha for the sake of reducing the price. I allowed the Food Reserve Agency to release the maize they had, had because the maize that Mr. Kafabula is managing is not private money maize. It is public money maize. It must make sure that it cushions the consumer. But what we must all guard against is these politicians who think they can make cheap political mileage by telling blatant lies. That must not be condoned whatsoever. And, you know, this is close to treason. To create such a panic on the market. Treason? Well, you're watching the quest, and you'll be free to participate on the program by calling uh, 251901 or sending us a message on uh, TV1, uh, leave a space, leave space, write your message, and send to 4882. Do we have a caller? Hello? Hello, good evening. This is HM from Kawe. Uh, uh, just tell us your Hello? name again, so we missed your name. Uh, Hello? Hello, please go ahead, tell us your name. Hello? Okay, uh, <laughs> please call again. Um, so like I was saying, Mr. Zulu, there is totally no reason for anyone to panic. But like I was saying, I wouldn't totally discount the fact that even some of the millers may be hoarding maize for fear that probably what they are hearing, what they are reading about is true. That probably we're running out of maize. And if we do run out of maize, then they can exploit the market by increasing prices. That is the reaction of the market. And remember that the food market is particularly very volatile. Yeah. The food market is extremely sensitive. It's not the same as the clothes market. On the food market, like Dr. Nguleka said, the moment you say we fear tomorrow there will not be enough food, then they will fill up all bathtubs. Uh, and that's what is happening now. And Mr. Chintala put it very well, that some of the people who have the money, when they hear that there is no food, what do they do? They go and buy extra bags and repack them to exploit those who can't afford that particular day. And people will buy because they are worried that they may not find the commodity the following day. Beyond that, there is also the fact that, like I said, some peripheries, some rural areas, do not have sufficient milling capacity. And some people are coming into the cities and queuing up and employing people to buy extra bags, which they are loading on trucks to take to the rural areas where they're exploiting the people. Uh, let's, let's, let's take in a caller. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good, ev good evening. Uh, please go ahead, tell us your name. And, Are you able uh, to get me there? Yes, we're able to get you. Go ahead, if tell us your name and me, your contribution. Let me make my contribution. I am Mizi, calling from Ndeke Township in Dora Grevazio. I can't get you. Let me just make my contribution. Uh, my, contri my question goes straight to uh, Honorable Given Ruinda. Ruinda, Mr. Ruinda, that is a very nice program which have been brought there to tell the nation exactly what is happening. But I'm very disappointed, Honorable Minister. You want to politicize that program and start mentioning names and the people who are not there to defend. Please, use that platform and tell us exactly 
what is actually happening in our country. Like the other gentlemen and the lady have done, they have articulated well, and I can rest assure you I have understood. I'm very disappointed, sir, I'll be to be, have to be frank with you the way you are coming at. Please tell the nation why we are having this situation. Thank you so much and work well. Thank you, um, Minister. <coughs> Thank you, you. You, you are still going to be asked probably the 2,000th time because the caller says he does not get you. You've not uh, explained yourself. I, I'm glad he says that he has understood what my colleagues have said and he's disappointed with me by mentioning names of people who are not on the panel. I agree with you and I'm sure that you've been following me and I rarely do that. But this time I'm totally compelled to do it because the one person who has been on rampage, and I want to, re to repeat this, on rampage, telling the whole country and the whole world blue blatant lies, is a well-known person by the name Hagainde Hijirema. Had it been Chishimba Kambuidi, I would have said it. Had it been me, I would have said it's me who made the mistake. I told the people that there is no food in Zambia and that's the reason why they are panicking. The reason why there is this artificial shortage, like everyone has said, is because there has been created an impression that there isn't enough food. And once you create the impression that there is not enough food, you put the market in panic. You put the market in a frenzy. The reaction of the market would be by hoarding the commodity for that rainy day. And my dear friend from Mundeke, had it been you who said it, I would have said you are the one who created the panic. But in this particular case, you know who has been creating the panic. I wonder whether that gentleman from Mundeke read the newspaper articles where Hagainde and his MPs were talking about food shortage in Zambia. Whether he watched the Friday BBC Focus on Africa where Hagainde claimed that Zambia is importing maize at $500 per metric ton. Why shouldn't I mention him when actually the whole world watched him? Hadn't he said it? I wouldn't have brought him into the picture. But the fact that he mentioned this, and he has kept mentioning it, even when I clarified the matter, he still went ahead and said he had evidence. I said I gave him a week to produce evidence that there was anybody who was importing maize at $500 the ton. He and hasn't you have done got it. No, you, you haven't got that evidence. No. I'll, I'll move to another uh, panelist, but let me just get a call mm -hmm. in. Uh, hello. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. If you can hear us, please go ahead and make your contribution. Tell us your name and where you're calling from. Yeah, I'm calling from Mazatuka, and my name is uh, Vincent. Uh, in the name of uh, panic, of course, there is panic in all the we see people queuing up now for mini meals. Uh, I would like to get a story from the minister that uh, this panic will come to an end and how soon that panic will go. Thank you. Uh, minister, I wanted to allow you to answer that, but I'll move first to, <laughs> to say in a few, because this show will because be turning you're, to... You're, 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 you're afraid you're, that I'll mention him. No, because you take over the show and nobody will speak after that. <laughs> Doc, <laughs> we can back up. You can, you can answer probably for the minister, the grain traders, the millers. Yeah. People want to know. They want an assurance. When is this panic going to go away? Why are we not flooding the market? Gravazo, um, yeah. I actually mentioned something here to say we've engaged the government. Uh, we've engaged FRA. We've discussed. We've given them our conceptions. We'll be meeting hopefully next, I mean this week, with the minister and maybe FRA to try and find how best do we uh, do that. So definitely usually what happens, this has been happening. Mm -hmm. we, have, we have a very good understanding between the ministry and FRA. <coughs> so we've heard there is a shortage there and I contacted the millers. Yes, they're saying we need more maize so that we can mill and flood the market. So we've found a solution. And I said within the next one, two weeks, you we should be able to see the situation improves. Millers will be given more, more allocations according to their milling capacities. That entails that we'll have more ma milli mill on the market. I don't know Rent what lady, other assurance. Uh, okay, yes. Doc, Doc, you could come. Yes, uh, Gravazio, I think I just want to take you back. I think you made a comment uh, on uh, why are people al just allowed to buy one bag of maize. I'm not only a uh, Sounds a like farmer. a cake, a cake move. No, I Very mean, I'm, I'm not just a, a farmer, I'm a mother. Explain mm -hmm. to me why I'm going to buy 10 bags of, of millimil for a household. 
why I'm going to buy two maybe at the month and yes, this is right in the middle of the month. Probably if they had bought two, they still have the maize. But, so but, but people look, are we, reacting. Should we tell people because it's on the 15th, <laughs> you're only going to buy one bag? No, why, you're have a why right it, why it was the done? Why it was done? The 17th. Why it was done is because people have been told that the maize is going to run out. And if you tell me that maize is going to run out, I'll calculate how many bags will my family need between now and when the crop dries up in my field. I'll probably not buy two. I'll buy six. And Assu assuming you have the money. That is assuming I have the money, yes. And I'll probably have to borrow to make sure that I buy enough for the family. And that is the problem, and that is something that we do not want people to do. There is no need to buy millimil that you are going to eat next month, today. Because next month the millers are not closing down shop. They are going to be milling, and you are going to follow, and you are going to op find the shops open, and you are going to buy. So there is no need to panic. Why we are here today is to tell the people that we have produced enough food for this country, for our animals, for our fish included, when we produce, we produce for everybody. And that's where I believe that farmers of Zambia have done their very best. So the panic is on two fronts. Maybe the millers or grain traders can pick that up. The panic is on two fronts. Uh, people are panicking because they think probably the maize is going to run out. And they are panicking because they know if I get mini at 75 today, I'll probably find it at 95 on Monday. Yes. Um, Grebazo, um, let me pick it up. One, um, I'm seated with uh, Mr. Kafaula here in charge of FRA. We've been talking as millers. He's assured us, and we are on national TV here, this is a very serious issue we're discussing. He's still telling you and, and I there is enough maize to offload to the millers. Now, you will not see any price increase as long as we continue accessing the maize from Mr. Kafabulula. Okay, now, I'll, I'll, I'll interrupt uh, you. Let me just, we just pick another caller and then uh, please don't lose your thought. Uh, good evening. Hello, good evening. Hello? Please tell us your name, uh, where you're calling from, and go ahead with your contribution. Hello? Hello? Okay. Yeah, um... Um, can I speak in Bemba, sir? Uh, yes, please. Go ahead, yes. It's okay. Okay, I want to use Bemba, okay? Yeah. Um, Rubinda, and the Foku picture of a minister, Rubinda, agriculture minister. Uh, Pamulandu, uh, Mataba. If you see a Kularum, Blama, Shinayavan, to Kularum, Blava, HHC, Banan, Katia, to a Panaman, or no. Uh, we seem to have lost that color. Uh. Yes, Grevazo, like I was saying, you see, I may wish to, through this um, forum, maybe just to appeal to the public and to the consumers out there. We as uh, millers, we are also concerned because ultimately when there is a problem or an outcry about the shortage of mini mill and all, the fingers are pointing at a miller. Now, there, there are so many players throughout the process. When we mill, we push it out there to our outlets, to our agents and all that. There is also another trader that is coming there, who when they buy it for 70 kwacha or 72 kwacha, 75, they would want to sell for 90, 95 kwacha. Now, let me appeal to the consumers. I think you've seen some of my millers. I've been even advertising in the newspapers, say we've got outlets dotted from this point to the other point so that those that are buying minimum maybe for over 90 kwacha you shouldn't buy minimum at 90 kwacha the recommended price out there is 75 kwacha so and i can only buying at 125 yeah but it's unfortunate this is why i'm appealing to the consumers can you buy minimum from the designated selling points of some of these milling companies We've got a lot of milling companies. I don't want to start marketing mini mill for <laughs> certain millers here. Otherwise, I would not mention the 100 and where they're located. And I don't want to be selective. All I'm saying is, can they go and access the product from the designated depots? If they go to some depot and find this is depot A and the, the price is 85 kwacha, let them contact MAS or the government and say, 
Your Mila is sitting at 85 kwacha. <coughs> we'll, we'll move in and I mean, we intervene and correct the situation. But if you find a bag is sitting maybe in Baulini, it, it's beyond the control because he's a trader. And all we're saying is buy minimal, access minimal from, from the designated, designated points. points. We have another caller. Hello, good evening. Hello. Uh, good evening. Uh, tell us your name, where you're calling from. And the of volume on your TV set. Hello? 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 Minister, people want an assurance. Uh, when is this panic <clears throat> going to end? The panic will end when uh, people stop creating it. And that's the reason why I'd like to appeal to all Zambians to be a bit more patriotic than we have seen in a few Zambians. Once we stop creating this frenzy and this panic, people will stop panic buying and there shall be a regular supply of mini meal. For as long as people are put in a panic mode, I'm afraid they will continue to be panic buying and there will continue to be artificial shortages. Minister, I want you to hold your thought. Yeah. Uh, hello, good evening. Good evening, please tell us your name, where you're calling from and go ahead with your contribution. Hello? Uh, good evening, sir. Please uh, go ahead and tell us uh, your name and your contribution. This is Mama calling you from Shilavong. My contribution, one goes to the minister and the other one to the Miller's Association. Uh, in Shilavong, we are having a problem with the the, the crisis. Why, to the minister, why can't the government come in to control the prices? Because in Shilawombe, the, min, uh, the, min, uh, the minimum price we can get is 25 kg, but it's thin. That is, it's thin. It's 110,000 kwacha, the 25 kg. And the, we are seeing that going straight to Kasumbalesa where the millers and the businessmen are selling the same quantity of uh, millimeter at over 150. So it's like uh, uh, the millers are taking advantage to disadvantage us and exporting this millimeter and creating the shortage. So will you please tell us what is uh, going on? Thank you so Thank much, you. sir. Um, Grain traders, I think, can also pick up that, as well as the, <laughs> uh, the minister. The caller says, if seen, the bag of minimum was at 110, which means probably it's not even seen at all. <laughs> no, um, Gravazo, the situation is, like I earlier on alluded to, there are other traders who are taking advantage of the situation. We, millers, have signed the contract with Food Reserve Agency where we have agreed on the cost and the price. Now, the, the issue that is trying to raise here, can the government control the price? price Remember, controls. we are running mm -hmm. a liberalized economy. The moment you do that, then you will kill the industries. And I don't think we should take that route just because of one commodity. We're sitting here this evening because we're trying to find solutions. It's probably not just one commodity, but it borders on people's lives step of food. yeah it's, it's a st it's a serious issue this is why we are seated here discussing this to try and find a solution and assure the nation we've got sufficient stocks and i've appealed to say let the consumers find designated depots or agents who are selling these products on behalf of the millers because the selling price is 75 kwacha so if you got that uh, bag for 110 where did you get it from there is. If seen. Mind so you, yeah. probably it's yeah, yeah, sure. not there. It's seen, yeah. Mind so you, there is. You're failing the, the, the community you know, of Chilabamu. There is, there is a stock monitoring team that the ministry has put in place that are visiting towns and visiting the millers and the outlets that we are selling from. It is not possible that a registered miller can sell a bag for more than 75 kwacha. Unless you would come forward and say, okay, I found a, a, I mean, this, this, this milling company that is selling that. But it is happening, yes. And I've mentioned there are traders that have taken advantage of the situation. Great yes. traders. I think for me what is annoying is, uh, is that uh, I think Honorable Lubin has put enough facts, not just here. We've been talking. I mean, I've been sitting with the ministry for, for quite some time. 
there is sufficient stock of maize. Okay, but what is now killing the whole thing with this persistent talk is the element of uh, the export markets. Okay, what we should not forget is that uh, what we should not forget is that uh, we're surrounded by Zimbabwe and Malawi. These guys have had uh, a bigger deficit. Mm -hmm. Okay, Congo. I'm not worried about it. Congo is our is our brand. We, we've always fed Congo. No matter whatever we can talk about Congo, these problems will always be there. Okay, the issue is we should uh, legalize the trade between Zambia and Congo. Okay, but Malawi and Zimbabwe, these are our neighbors that have complained to say they don't have sufficient stocks. Uh, okay, and then the excess we have with the two two seven thousand metric tons. You know how much revenue we we'll get from that in terms of forex. We're talking about past 70 million US dollars. Is that money for the trader? No. It is for the farmer. It's for, for Z and few. Okay, we plow it into, we, we, we plow it back into the next uh, season, marketing season, to buy the stocks off the farmer for, for on sale to the millers and the other processors. Well, then uh, you, you also mentioned a bit on uh, stock feed. Stock feed, uh, I think even will talk more about that. I'm really surprised why. <laughs> the cost of feed is so high. I'm a poultry farmer too, but I don't understand why. Again, it goes back to the millers ripping off it's everyone else. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. The chair. <laughs> 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 from is saying, he's talking it's about the stock feed. Okay, thank you very much, uh, uh, Gravazio. I think uh, as we assure the nation, of course, we have assured the nation mm. that one, the farmer has done his job. Mm. We have produced. The buyer has done his job. They have secured the crop. Mm. I think in the past years, mm. some of the problems we used to have was no, FRA did not take care of the maize. Mm. It was rotten. You know, it was not covered. And all those things. And that mm. was taken care of. And we have made sure that up to today, the maize is in safe custody. So now, you and I should be sitting here discussing a commodity that we have in, in, in safe custody. There are, I think, in addition to what the minister said, I would like to know also as a consumer, to what capacity are the millers maybe uh, milling? Are they exploiting? Are they under milling? Because Deliberate. maybe that could be, yes, maybe that could be the problem. Because the raw material is there. And I know at one point we used to have, uh, we had a reason, no, there was a power shortage and there was, you know, so on and so forth. Maybe let's try and discuss at what capacity are we milling? Because if I look at the storage, the installed capacity of the milling of the, all the mills in this country, Gravazio, you and I cannot consume what these millers can produce if they all went out flat out. To produce so maybe we should be asking ourselves why is there no commodity in the shops are they doing it at quarter the capacity i did raise that and the minister did accuse me of probably picking it from somebody no else. no no no, <laughs> no that's the no. question okay at least it's not coming from the minister then it's coming from, from me <laughs> yes maybe so are you under me <laughs> so, so that we can know what we're dealing with Rebazo have said yes <laughs> the millers are not milling at full capacity, uh, full capacity. Mm -hmm. all right so what we're saying is we are trying, we've engaged the government, we've engaged FRA, where are we drawing the stocks from? If these millers, if FRA offloads the maize, you, you will see milling on the market. We are milling, there's no miller that is holding on to maize. You are milling at what capacity? 40, 30, 40%? Um, I'd, I'd say we're doing about 60%. The maize is there. The maize is there. Is that enough you as the maize? The grain traders have the maize. I FRA has the maize. Remember, I spoke about their location, and we haven't touched even the GTAZ maize or ZNFU for reasons very simple. If we get maize here, the price tomorrow will be different from what we're getting from FRA. They still have stock that will last, that will push us for the ne next five months. This is why we're busy negotiating and talking. We're engaging them. It's just that whenever there are these, probably the millers have not come out there to try and correct the situation. Mm -hmm. I've said we've engaged the ministry. We, we, we have a caller before I, I, I get to Mr. Kofarula. Hello. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, Gravazio. How are you? 
Fine, thank you. Please go ahead and uh, tell Hello. us your name and your contribution. Go ahead, please. Hello. My name is Charu Chibura. I'm calling from Dola, Copa Bell. Hello, can you get me? Yes, we can get you. Please just go ahead and say what you have to say. Yes, I want to commend the minister for mentioning the name because it's very unfair for a patriotic Zambian to go and tell us. Secondly, I want to commend those gentlemen on the panel. They are very wise, articulating issues very pro 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 properly. Lady. Now, you see, we cannot tolerate a person who is fighting for a president to go and tell our country. He's got a family here and he goes to tell things that are not good on our staff. It's not fair, you know? It's not all right. He's a Zambian. He's telling us. Okay. Then secondly, I want to ask the minister, you know, we are very close to the traders, and these are the traders that are selling new me at 8500 How are you going to control this kind of prices? Thank you. Well, we've, we've, you've got support there, Minister, for, for, for mentioning uh, names. I'm, 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 I'm not support out there. Any Zambians who really are enjoying what they are seeing on the market, I'm sure no, no, no Zambian would enjoy the panic that has been created, you know, for wrong reasons. Now, let me, let me answer the question he asked, and especially the question asked by the gentleman from uh, Chilabombwe. Mm -hmm. And in answering that question, let me state the fact that Zambia is not an island. Mm -hmm. And fortunately for us, we're very well linked to eight other countries. And if you include Burundi, there are nine, and could easily be ten. Mm. And this, this is all a market available for us Zambians. Uh, and if there is a short supply of a commodity around us, and we're the only ones who have the commodity, naturally, whether we like it or not, that commodity will be sought after mm -hmm. by the markets in the region. That is what is happening now. Mr. Chintala told you the maize that they are sitting on will bring into Zambia 90, 70 million dollars. Mm -hmm. So far the maize that has been exported through the Grain Traders Association and through farmers brought into Zambia mm -hmm. for the very first time in the history of Zambia 200 million dollars. Now I'm not saying I want to trade off food security for income. No. Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is that for Border towns such as Chilabombwe, there will always be this extra pressure yeah. because of the market, very close proximity to the Congolese market, which is willing to pay higher prices than what we want Zambians to pay. Now, what are we doing about it? I think that the Zambians heard two weeks ago when I announced, when I had a press briefing, I announced that we had cancelled contracts for four millers. So actually the number that Mr. Kafaru was talking about, 101, was the starting number. After we cancelled those four contracts, the number came to 97. 97. And I think that he's still floating with 97, unless he brought in other millers. <laughs> <laughs> the issue that uh, uh, Mr. Chintala spoke about, about capacity utilization, I agree. At the time that we decided to start this program, we decided to release maize, FRA maize, to as many millers as possible because we wanted to try and flood the market as quickly as possible. And op not only the Copper Belt or the Lusaka market, but even markets mm. out in rural areas. Mm. In so doing, we calculated what the, uh, the monthly consumption is. And we said 100,000 metric tons of maize. Mm. We released 100,000 to all the millers which meant, therefore, that we are supplying the market the quantity that is required for that month. Mm -hmm. Our worry is, if we were to give much more than monthly consumption, we will actually be encouraging speculation. Because then there will be some millers... You, you will not be flooding the market instead. No. You know, when you have created the panic, mm -hmm. and when there is such a huge market in the sub-region, mm -hmm. and you give millers much more than they can manage to handle that month. For instance, if we were to double the, the releases and mm -hmm. give them 200,000, then it. what will happen? The extra 100 <coughs> will go out mm -hmm. because the Zambian market won't absorb it. So my appeal to all Zambians is please buy that which is necessary for you for the month.
There is no reason to stockpile. And I also appeal to the millers. There is no need for them do, to do, do Zambians have that enough money to stockpile, Minister? Probably the, before you answer the, that, there are I want us to also look at uh, SMSs. People have sent in some messages. Uh, I want us to look at those before you, you, you eventually answer. One of them says, if you are saying there's enough, why are we restricted to buy one bag of mini-mill? Or is it a new policy which the government have put in place to control the demand of the commodity? Another message says, what are you doing with places like Mwinlunga where a bag of millimil is now costing 120 kwacha? This has become official, uh, become difficult to run boarding and government institutions. We have another message which says, Minister, since the country has enough maize, what is protocol for an individual to ex export maize and assure me the process is not complex? Uh, Millers, you are not flooding the market, but you are rushing the mini mill beyond borders. I stay at Mwami border, Chipata, uh, Banda S. Yeah, but why is mini mill expensive when it is our own maize? Well, so many <laughs> points that we probably have. Uh, oh, another one, Honorable Vinda, what is the recommended price of mini mill here in Sesheke? It is 85 kwacha. Is this the recommended price? It should be issue of supply and demand. Why not position maize in deficit areas? Mm. Simple economics, supply and demand. Precisely. But before you come in, Minister, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Minister Kofobulu has been too quiet. <laughs> and the last time, the buck stopped at the millers, who are milling at 60%. And that's the point we've not really tackled. Mm -hmm. We've instead tackled the panic side. And the 60% is being pushed on, Mr. Kofobulu. FRA, you're not giving the millers what they need. Uh, let me just uh, <clears throat> highlight some... Uh, <clears throat> some detail here. <clears throat> Millers have signed uh, contracts with FRA to the mm -hmm. tune of 750,000 metric tons. <clears throat> and the total number of Millers was initially 101. It's now 97 because of those that uh, uh, dropped out. Now, what we have done is, in order for us to ensure that we are food secure, if, for example, Miller X has signed a contract with FRA worth 20,000 metric tons for the whole duration. That miller will not be allowed to pick up the entire 20,000 metric tons. In the contract, the miller will have to state how much their monthly requirement is. So if for argument's sake, from the 20,000 metric tons signed for, the miller only requires 4,000 metric tons per month, that's what they'll be allowed to pay for, and they'll pick. The remainder, which is 16,000 metric tons, will be held by FRA. That is one of the controls. Mm -hmm. Because if we allow a miller to pay for, the, for this, this particular miller, if they're allowed to pay for the entire 20,000 metric tons, and the rest of the millers also are allowed to pay for whatever quantities that they've signed for, then we will not be saying that we are food secure, because once they pick the entire quantities, we will have no control. And I'm not sure I'll be sitting here and saying that we are food secure. So in other words, each individual miller who has signed a contract with FRA is only picking up an agreed quantity according to their production per month. Are we expanding that quantity? The millers are saying they're at 60%. Why are we not ramping up that production to 80%? There, there, are, some, if we can. there are some millers who have come back and they've said that they would like to increase their quantity. And these quantities have, have been increased. So when we say that we are food secure, it's because we know that the residue of the contract is still in the custody of FRA. That also helps us. In mm -hmm. case the miller misbeh mis misbehaves or abrogates the contract, mm -hmm. we're able to terminate and still remain with the residue, the, con the, 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 the tonnage. But if a miller was allowed to pick, for example, in this case, the entire 20,000, and that miller abrogates the contract, you have no control. The maze is already gone. So that is one of the fine-tuning that we have put in into the contract as FRA. Doc? Yes, uh, maybe just before we, we talk with uh, the SMSs, I think uh, as farmers we interact with the millers quite a lot. And uh, one of the things that I know is that uh, during the months of starting from March, from now, March, April, actually normally every year in, year out, millers are going to complain to you that milling is not moving. Mm. I have friends who are millers. They run milling companies. Why is that? Because apart from maize, we have grown pumpkins, mm -hmm. we have sweet potatoes, we have groundnuts, we have so many other foods that are ready in the field now. 
I was expecting this crisis to be in January because the farmer could have probably not held enough and they had nothing in the field to eat. It is actually iron ironical and it doesn't make sense for a country like Zambia. We are uh, at I think on a large scale, agriculture based. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have a small garden somewhere. Not everybody buys sweet potatoes. A number of people just go to the field and pick up sweet potatoes and a pumpkin here and there. And ideally, we should not even be discussing shortage of maize mm. and milli meal at this point in time. In March. If mm. anything, the miller should now be complaining that the milli meal is not moving mm. because there's so much food out there. I've, I've just come back from, uh, from Luapula. I arrived on, on, on Saturday and I toured the northern province. Almost the whole road is flooded with sweet potatoes, with Fresh the maize. inyungu, mm. you know, with maize, with mm. a lot of food. And that is what makes people panic to buy food. So therefore, the people who are really panicking are people like you and I, who are probably here in Lusaka. And the reason we are panicking is a speculation. But the, 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 the SMSs there spoke to Sesheke and Winlunga, where the prices are quite high. It, yes, Southern Province, Western Province have had a challenge. And unfortunately, people have taken advantage. Our people, starting from Kafiwe actually going down, the, rain, the rainfall pattern has been quite poor. So it is possible. And if, if you go, I mean, I'm from Western Province and Honorable Winda is from Western Province. Not all of our people, we don't have, in some of the areas, we do not have the soils for maize production. production. And well, unfor uh, 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 unfortunately, don't lose your thought. We have a yes. call on the line. Hello. <laughs> Hello, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Lovinda. Good evening, Dr. sir. Dr. Proud. Hello, my uh, friend. I want only to contribute to this shortage of milimil. I was speaking to one of my brothers in Eastern Province. They are buying, especially Chama, they are buying 25 kg, 100 kwach. And now 12 kg, uh, 65. Uh, when you say there is a people who are smuggling a miru miru, Mr. Minister, we are in a commercial trade area. So people are free to import means, you know, commercial, where he is in the Talent. You can go and import commodity. What we want next season, Mr. Ruvinda, increase it to pay farmers in time. So then they can't reduce this crisis we got. So crying, you won't solve any problem. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Proud. Um, uh, Minister, I want you to address these two issues uh, that is coming out, the high price of milli meal and the issue of uh, smuggling. These are words that really had disappeared on, on, on the Zambian market. Mm -hmm. And right. uh, mm -hmm. being forced to buy one bag and queuing up for mini meal, these are things that people can't remember the last time they saw them, mm -hmm. and they're back. And shouldn't you panic? Shouldn't you worry? No, you shouldn't. You yeah. should, you, you no. should panic yourself. No. Well, not, not, not the uh, people, but uh, uh, as, as government. Uh, uh, you already cautioned me not to be upset, and I don't want to be upset. <laughs> Right. But the reason I'm being upset is because some people are creating this unnecessary anxiety. That's my worry. People are creating unnecessary anxiety. Even the issue of smuggling is exacerbated by this panic that is created on the market. And uh, my friend Proud, uh, I hear you very clearly, but uh, you do your research a bit more. You discover that uh, Comesa allows limited quantities of any commodity to cross borders without export permits. Above those quantities, it becomes a commercial trade. And any commercial transaction across borders requires the obtaining of import and export permits. Mm -hmm. When I went and uh, seized the maize at the Muami border, it was because people wanted to smuggle it. They wanted to take it out of Zambia without necessary export permits. That was the reason why we had to bring it back to Zambia. And this is also the issue with the Chilabombwe case. The people are buying maize from Kasumbalesa and taking it out of the border, out of Zambia, into Congo. And they're getting 10, 20 bags. Naturally, that requires an export permit. And the only authority to issue an export permit is the Ministry of Agriculture. And I am not issuing permits for the export of millimil. There's a ban. There's no ban. 
which just never happened. I, well, I, let, 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 let just, me, don't lose your thought, Minister. There's, okay. there's a call on the line. Hello. Good evening. How are you, sir? Uh, please tell us your name, uh, where you're Hello. calling from, and go ahead with your contribution. Hello, good evening. Good evening, sir. Go ahead with your contribution. Okay, uh, my contribution, I just wanted to uh, ask the minister what measures uh, we put in place since we are the ones who are in government. Why can't FRA build their own shed rather than them paying or renting other sheds? Is it not too costly such that the Amatawa, Yale Dula, Nangugunga, Bule Dula? Ishendala Mesho Gabuntia, Ukulari, Iramaya Shed, Yavan. Is it maybe the woman acquired for Puevan to be in a quite high personage? I think you could not that. Why, by a mass family and the archipi couple, so that in the Babuki at the end of the day they get something like a cut. And the Kuava government said if you if you go to Mendeshi, Marasang is my shape here with a face, a party for Bakula, Pala Fia Masalab. You go to Mungu, Fiava say, Fia Mina to the party for Bakula, Mukati, Tabawa, Yama, much like the Jumba say every day. And they are busy for renting. For renting. How long are you going to rent your uh, your machine? Thank I you so much, sir, for your contribution, uh, Minister. The point there coming from a caller. Yes. For so how long are you going to rent these sheds? Maybe FRA could also pick it after. Yeah. Or do you want FRA to Mr. Kafolwa to start first? Yeah, let Mr. Kafolwa okay. handle that. Mm. Uh, thank you very much. First and f uh, foremost, the, the observation is actually correct. Um, there's a lot of. Um, renting of sheds that is the, taking place. <coughs> you see, the, the major problem when you look at our, our challenge <coughs> in terms of the, the, the storage capacity is that we have got a mismatch. There's a mismatch between the production, high production regions and the geographical location of the sheds. Most of these sheds were constructed in the number of days. 25, 30, 40 years ago. And when those sheds were being put in place, when they were being constructed, they were targeting areas that were high producing. Mm. Today, because of the climatic changes, depletion in, in, the, in the ozone layer, the, the maize belt has shifted to areas that initially were not maize producing regions. For example, up north. In fact, we buy most of the, our maize from the northern province. Mm -hmm. So that has now created a mismatch. You have a situation where in certain areas we have a lot of storage facilities, but production is low because the, the, the thing has actually uh, shifted. Then we also have certain areas where there are no sheds when sufficient in terms of storage, but production is very high. So we have come up with an investment plan which is running between 2014 and 2018. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad to report that in 2014, FRA put up 27 sheds. Mm -hmm. Those 27 sheds gave us an added storage capacity of 117,000 metric tons. Mm -hmm. In the next two to three months this year, we should be putting up uh, some five uh, grain silos. Uh, the contracts have already been uh, signed. We also intend to put up within the course of this year 98 uh, sheds. Now, those are the slabs that the gentleman is actually talking about. At the moment, these are 98 slabs but we want to upgrade them into closed uh, storage facilities. So we have got a very comprehensive uh, uh, investment policy that we are undertaking beginning from 2014 up to 2018. And of course it is true that uh, renting these sheds is extremely expensive, but probably that's the price that you pay for being food secure. True that there's the cuts behind the rent? Well, we need evidence for that. We need evidence. <laughs> we need evidence. We, we, we seem to be running out of time, but before we close, I want you to speak to a number of pertinent issues. Uh, Minister, the issues that you also have to respond to, and I want you to address the bigger issue of milling capacities at 60%, mm. and you're telling people not to panic. <coughs> there is uh, cause to panic. There's no, there's no cause to panic. Uh, 
if the monthly consumption is 100,000 mm -hmm. and FRA is releasing 100,000, what's the cause for panic? There's no cause for panic. But if, because of the panic, people are buying double the quantity they should be buying, then obviously there will be a shortage on the market. But is that a real shortage? No. It is an artificial shortage. Yes, the millers have been coming to us and asking if we can increase their locations. But like Mr. Kafabula said, they are looking at this on a case-by-case -case basis. Because we can't be sure that all the 97 millers would offload that millimill on the market when it's needed. Some might actually also hold the maize until after we said we're closing the sale of FRA maize, only then would they start to release the maize. So we have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. The issue for us is that for the time being, because of what we inherited with FRA being the keeper of national food security, we ought to continue with that. If the maize leaves the FRA sheds, mm -hmm. then I'll lose control. Then government will lose control. Then if you ask me the question, are we food secure? Then I'll not, be, not, able be, able to, to I'll not be able to answer. Because mm -hmm. the food, the maize will have <coughs> left government hands. It will have gone into Miller's hands. Mm -hmm. And the Miller, once he has paid for the maize, they'll argue that it's their product. They can use it the way they want. Because they bought it. Minister, because they quickly, bought I want you to address the issue of are the shortages going to end? Is the price going to be stable or come down? The price going forward is going to remain stable. Uh, I did emphasize that we canceled four contracts on the basis of Miller's escalating prices. So people in uh, Sesheke, now that I've heard that the price is 85, I'll have to confirm it with the district commissioner. People because I wrote, as well. I, 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 I wrote, I wrote, to all, I wrote to all provincial ministers asking them to inform district commissioners to be on the lookout, to inform us of any brand that is selling above our recommended price. Because remember, like Mr. Chintala said, we entered into legally binding contracts with the millers. And in those contracts, the millers agreed that they would pass on the maize to the trader at the price of 75, and that they will make sure that mm. the retailer does not increase the price by more than five kwach. Mm. That's what we agreed. Now, they signed this contract. For me, for government, as far as we're concerned, they accepted the responsibility of ensuring that the traders do not escalate prices. They cannot and pass it back. They shouldn't. Yeah. And that's the reason why you have not heard me penalizing any trader. I can't. I have no legal right. Mm. But I can penalize the, the miller because we have a contract with millers. Now, something else that uh, is crucial is the question that was asked, why is this maize so expensive when it is our own maize? Yes, it is our own maize, but it costs to produce it. Yeah. The farmers have to incur a cost. And we, the consumers, must make sure that, first of all, we meet the cost of production and also reward the farmer for their effort. Because if they're not rewarded, there will be no reason for them to grow. And remember, we want to be a food mm. basket of the sub-region. And for us to be a f food basket of the sub-region, we must attract more investment in agriculture. We cannot attract investment in agriculture if we're going to do what we've been doing in the past. Today we control prices, tomorrow mm. we open borders, the next day we close borders, and the investors are not even sure, well, if, I, if I grow this maize, will there be a market? So it's an issue of predictability. It's Minister, a question I have to of cut you and, and, and also, if, I, if, I, if I can just conc conclude on this matter. Besides the matter of predictability, it's also a matter of prudence. Mm. Yes, I would like FRA to have sheds, but remember that those sheds are going to hold your commodity for maybe six months of the year. The other six months, you can't use it for anything else. You can't use it for chemical fertilizers because it's not allowed. Now, the cost of running those sheds when they're empty will also be factored into the cost of the maize. But mm -hmm. even beyond that, so one of my colleagues did mention the fact that previously, by this time of the year, would be complaining that Food Reserve Agency had lost 20% of the maize they had bought mm -hmm. had gone mm -hmm. to waste. Mm -hmm. I think that the Zambian people must be kind enough, and I hope Mr. Hagainde can, can also be kind enough, as he is criticizing me based on uh, uh, his own imagination. <coughs> the reality is that he actually ought to be saying, well done, uh, government, you have done ex exceedingly well. Like never before, the Food Reserve Agency this year recorded a small little 
loss. And that loss is largely attributed to shrinkage, not because maize went to waste, but because of loss of waste, because of moisture content. Less than 1% of the crop that FRA bought mm -hmm. is what was recorded as a decrease. That is because of the prudence with which we are managing the strategic reserve. And I think the Zambians ought to be saying, this is the right way to go. Let the private sector be the leaders of agriculture. Let them be the ones who are actually involved in marketing. Let the Food Reserve Agency concentrate on holding on to strategic reserve, which we'll use the way we used it this year. When we see that there's an instability on the market because the traders are giving the maize out at a very high price, then the FRA can cushion the Zambians, can cushion consumers by releasing the maize which the consumers, which the tax Spares would have paid for. That so I think. Mr. I have to cut to you. You should have been alone. The problem, the problem. I'll come again. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come Doc, again. we're running out of time. Uh, okay. Final uh, words. Thank you very much, uh, Grovazio. I think I just want to comment on the why is the uh, uh, maize expensive when it is our maize? Yes, it is our maize and it's produced at a cost, as the minister said. We do not produce uh, this maize without input costs. We need. Uh, to apply fertilizers, we need to apply chemicals, and we need to make sure that the food that the people are eating is actually safe. So it is not only the production cost, it is also done in a manner that is safe for the consumer. And secondly, we've done it at a very, very difficult, uh, con in a very difficult conditions as Zambia. For the past two seasons, mm -hmm. if we had to go according to the weather patterns. Actually, we should have been importing food. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I'm not surprised that the commodity is expensive. And the farmer has to get a living out of it. Farming is a business. It is and not charity. charity. Mr. Yeah. Sumanga? Yeah, for me, I think uh, I, would, I, would, I would like to thank, uh, I think, the current government in terms of uh, the practice on the open border policy. This is uh, quite cardinal in terms of uh, uh, private uh, private sector participation. Government alone cannot deal with the trade. Uh, okay, the government would borrow money to participate in marketing at a higher cost, but private sector would borrow at a lesser cost. So for me, the issue why we're sitting here is really not shouldn't have been the issue. We should have been discussing what more should government do in terms of enhancing the current situation, in terms of. Uh, private sector participation. So I'd rather thank government currently. I hope they continue with the current pattern. Let's leave it as open as, 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 as possible in terms of trade. Drebazo, um, I'd like to address there was one issue on the SMS that um, was um, cons I mean concerning the, the, the millers of maize exports. The contract that we've signed with FRA, we've agreed on a price 75 kwacha, not more than that. The second condition, we are not allowed to export minimum. I don't think there are any exports of minimum. So those that are saying millers are exporting minimum, I'm not aware of that. I think going forward, we can assure the nation that uh, millers, we are ready to produce at full capacity. I've mentioned the word engaging. We've engaged the government. We've engaged FRA. We're discussing. Hopefully, sometime this week, we'll be sitting with FRA and the Ministry of officials to discuss and find a way forward in this. I know there are some millers who need the maize, as in yesterday, who may have run down. So we need to engage the government. It's not the 97 millers. There are a few millers. So I've used the word engaging. We'll engage the government. And the situation in the next one, two weeks will actually normalize. Mr. Kafabulon. Yes, but it's just an appeal, especially to our consumers in the, uh, that are in the far-flung areas. FRA is not just offloading maize to, to millers, but we are also offloading to the communities. So regions like uh, Mwinilunga, someone talked about Mwinilunga and, uh, and Sesheke in the SMS and such other far-flung areas. If they are in need of uh, maize, it's very simple. They can simply go and see their DCs. The mm -hmm. DC will put in a request for that particular uh, area and we're going to do what is called a community sale. So that to be a direct sale to that particular community. And then when, once they bought the maize, they can actually use the hammer mills to, to, to grind. 
So we can actually do a bypass if you like. We can yeah. ignore the meal and go straight to the community. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been watching uh, The Quest, and today's program was looking at national food security, and our guests were the Minister of Agriculture, Mr. Given Lubinda, the Food Reserve Agency Executive Director, Mr. Chola Kafobulula, the Zambia National Farmers Union President, Dr. Evelyn Ngoleka, Mr. Andrew Chintala, Miller's Association of Zambia, Interim uh, Chairperson, and Mr. Chambleni Swinger, the Grain Trader Association Secretary. Thank you for watching. Hope you've got something from the program. Pleasant viewing.